will explain how to write your proposal and what it should look like. Again, obligatory flying squirrel animation. All right, the proposal. How do you write the proposal? Well, it's really just a simple selection of four steps. First, you come up with a fake scenario. And this is basically a scenario where someone asks you to solve a problem or answer a question that uses this habitat model that we're going to make for the West Virginia Northern Flying Squirrel. <clears throat> we're all going to make the same model. There'll be some things that we each do a little bit differently, but at the end of the day, everyone's going to identify where the flying squirrel habitat exists. So you have to come up with a scenario that asks a question that will help uh, help you um, uh, figure out, uh, or that, that needs that data set in order to uh, figure out the answer. So I'm going to give you a couple of open-ended fake scenarios, and you can use one of these if you like, or you can come up with your own. Say the International Union of Evil Timber Barons um, has decided that they want to eliminate the northern West Virginia flying squirrel from existence because the chairman of the board of this said evil group was injured by a flying squirrel as a child and is profoundly afraid of them. And so he wants to focus their group's efforts to clear-cut all the forests in the areas where these squirrels exist. And so on the down low, he has approached your environmental sciences firm to identify all the counties with significant populations or significant areas of flying squirrel habitat. And that's your job. So, you know, thinking of the uh, evil villain kind of a way of approaching this, the question would be where, you know, which counties have the most flying squirrel habitat? It's a very simple question that can then be used to create maps that the International Union of Evil Timber Barons could then target their deforestation efforts to eliminate said flying rodent or maybe the local um, Boy Scouts uh, organization in Northern Virginia um, wants to um, schedule a uh, weekend nighttime getaway for um, a collection of local Eagle Scouts uh, to go um, watch for and record the uh, presence or absence of this uh, uh, rare species uh, of flying squirrel. And so they want to know uh, which county um, is the best place to look for this squirrel. Again, so again, a simple question of which county has the most habitat for this. Maybe the question is something simpler. Um, a land trust group uh, was recently bequeathed a large sum of money, uh, and the money was earmarked to protect habitat of rare species of flying squirrels. And they asked you to identify how much flying squirrel habitat there is in the state and to uh, numerically quantify the extent of that habitat so they have some idea of how much money they can offer um, to uh, purchase these uh, lands that happen to be in question. Or maybe the head of the Forest Service, the USDA Forest Service, um, wants to simply um, identify how much northern flying squirrel habitat exists in the national forests of West Virginia. 
or maybe um, the governor of the state simply wants to know how much habitat flying squirrel habitat is there in the state uh, lots of fake scenarios that you can set up for for why some person or some group asks this question of you now some of these questions we talked about required a, a little bit additional work so if you ask a question like which counties have the most or how much is in a county there's going to be an additional step at the end that you have to do but it's a minor step and, and we'll show that in the demonstration Whereas if your scenario ends up with a how much habitat is in the entire state kind of a question, then it's one it's a little bit easier project. But you come up with whatever that scenario is. And then from that scenario, you have to ask this broad, open-ended question. So even after we went on about this uh, league of evil timber barons and concocted this crazy scenario why they want to destroy all the flying squirrels, at the end of the day, they simply want to know, what counties have flying squirrel habitat? And so your simple question would be, what counties in West Virginia contain habitat for the West Virginia Northern Flying Squirrel? Question mark. That's a simple question. It's a broad open in the question. It doesn't give any specifics. It doesn't talk about any of the methodology. It's just a big open ended question that you need to ask uh, to answer. Next, you got to define the big concept way to do to answer these sorts of questions. And so the bulk of what we're going to do is basically overlay data and map algebra. And depending on the question that you ask, there could be some zonal statistics. Overlay functions is simply taking one data set and laying another data set over it and then combining them in some way. The particular way we're going to do is something called map algebra. And so uh, you would write up you know, a, a sentence or two that would be something to the effect of this. Um, to identify the habitat in West Virginia, uh, selected land cover data sets will be overlay. Uh, we will overlay certain selected land cover data sets with an elevation model identifying elevations over 909 meters. Period. That is the crux of what the uh, analysis would be. And so some sentence to that effect, uh, more or less verbatim of what I just said, would be fine. Now, if your question involves how much habitat is in a county, or which counties have the most habitat, or which counties have habitat, then that kind of revolves around that next question. Uh, and then the next question would be, if, if that's sort of going, that's not the next question. If that's part of your question, then uh, your methodology would include, and then use zonal, st zonal statistics to calculate the amount of habitat in each county. And that's all you would have to say additionally. All right. The next point is to describe the map you're going to make and how you plan to use that to answer the question. And so generally speaking, you would want to make a map of elevation above 909 meters, uh, make a map that identifies selected land covers across the state. And the other maps and tables would be things like, uh, well, you want to make a habitat map. You would want to make a map that identifies the flying squirrel habitat across West Virginia. And if you had to make other maps, it would be like a map of um, uh, a map of West Virginia counties and uh, the flying squirrel habitat in each each county. Or maybe you want to not do that. Maybe you want to make a table. A table is a really good way of showing that information. Uh, I'll make a table that lists the names of all the counties with flying squirrel habitat and how much habitat's there. Simple. And so once you've kind of worked through this kind of stuff and you've jotted down some notes, you come up with some uh, crazy or maybe not so crazy, maybe more uh, reasonable scenario than the International Union of Evil Timber Barons. Maybe it's the Sierra Club or maybe it's a large timber company that wants to avoid the flying squirrel habitat. So they're trying to purchase timber tracks in areas where the squirrels don't exist or that don't meet the squirrels habitat or the squirrels criteria. There's all kinds of scenarios you can come up with, but you've picked one. You've wrote up some little sentence about it. You've um, come up with kind of your question and you can tell because at the end of it, it's got a question mark and you've, you know, made a sentence there saying that you're going to overlay these two different data types and combine them with map algebra to generate the various maps and land cover and habitat things that, you know, we're talking about. 
um, to answer the question. And so at this point in time, the only thing you really got to do is try to refine it because some of these transitions are going to be kind of rough. And sometimes you're going to say things, maybe you say it in the methods, maybe you say it again in the, what you're mapping. Maybe you can clean it up a little bit, make it a little bit neater, a little more refined, easier to read. That's what you want to do. And ultimately, you're going to work this down into a paragraph that's approximately uh, half a page or so long. And at which time you will just copy all that text. You'll go into Canvas. You'll open up the proposal submission link. And depending on how the link's set up, you'll either submit a Word document that has your text in it, or it may be a, a, an, an essay-like question where you can just go in and paste the text that you just finished refining into it, and your proposal is done. And essentially, the proposal is just to make sure that everyone understands what we're doing and how we're doing it. And so a lot of times we'll set the proposal to be where you can submit it twice. So you'll submit it and then get feedback if there's things that you need to fix. Or if you didn't read any instructions and you wrote this wonderful proposal about how you want to do something that's completely unrelated to the project, in which case we'll tell you no, follow the instructions and do what you were told. All right, that should get you ready for the next part. Um, again, if you do these steps as we cover it and you take the time, this project will be a breeze and you'll finish it without any stress or remorse. Thanks.